Monster Kayla Anderson will bowling. Joined by VolQuest and on threes, Austin Price as Tennessee finishes up week one and prepares for week two in Charlotte, the Mayo Classic against the NC State Wolfpack. Austin, good morning. How are you? I'm doing great, guys. How are you all doing? We are excellent. Austin, we have already had a Nico Iamaliava Heisman odds conversation, and it is only week two. What impressed you the most about what he was able to do on Saturday? Just his ability to, to use all aspects of the field. Um, that's something that Tennessee's offense just didn't have a year ago. Um, his ball placement was outstanding. Just, And I think you'll see it more. I know it's Chattanooga. I think you'll see it even when Tennessee's playing NC State or Oklahoma or Arkansas or Florida or Alabama. He's just never going to be one that gets rattled. You know, I mean, he, he's going to make bad throws. He'll throw a pick or two from time to time. That's going to happen. Like People that think he's just infallible need to go ahead and get ready because he's going to have some moments. But he's going to make his fair share of plays that gives Tennessee a really good chance to win almost every Saturday, if not every Saturday. And he just he just has that it factor. And, again, the, the two plays that really stick out to me, and, and, and I'll actually we'll just focus on the one, was his first completion of the game. He got flushed out of the pocket, kept his eyes down the field, and was able to find Chris Bradley. He did that again, flipping it going the other direction later in the game. And, like, his ability to keep his eyes up the field and allow his receivers to continue to work instead of just immediately going, got to run. You know, I think that will help them. There's some real Bryce Young tendencies there um, and attributes uh, at a, on a Nico – you know, body frame that's, you know, near 6'6", that just says, man, this kid's got just unbelievable untapped potential. Well, Austin, we certainly saw what we thought Nico Iamaliava would be. He he lived up to the hype through through one game. Did anything surprise you specifically about the Tennessee offense in week one? Huh, that, that they rotated so many bodies on the offensive line. Um, you know, again, and really overall, not just still the offense. I mean, they, they rotated. I mean, Josh Heupel said all that. But the coaches have been meaning to do that the last year or so and just haven't ever gotten they, they get into games, they get into the, to the, you know, the competitive situations, and they forget to rotate as much as they'd actually like to. And then they go back and go, oh, we should have done that. Like, well, they did it Saturday. They get this Chattanooga. But, I mean, Rodney Gardner was rotating four new offensive linemen on, on the first drive after the first play. I mean, like, it, it was – their ability to get a lot of different players, quality reps, I thought was huge. Um, but I think it's just how deep they are receiver. And I think we all kind of suspected they were deep at receiver. But, again, if Dante – I'm not saying he's going to put up, you know, three catches for 104 or 5 or whatever it was and two touchdowns every week, that's not realistic. But, I mean, if he continues to play with confidence and, and makes plays, if he's your fourth receiver – and the rest of the, the the rest of the league and rest of Tennessee's schedule needs to, to worry because, I mean that's that's a game changer when all of a sudden your four and five guys are legit playmakers and people you have to worry about taking it sixty five or seventy yards on any given play. That is a, a, a stark contrast from what Nico was throwing to in the bowl game and really what Joe threw to all of last year. Austin Price of Quest with us this morning. Austin, there's so many guys I could point out that feel like got better. I mean, watching Elijah push the middle of that offensive line back, Tyree West, Bryson. Everybody made plays, man, but one in particular goes to the true freshman. Um, Jordan, Jordan, uh, golly, Jordan Ross. Seeing him block a punt, scoop and score, man, how big was that for him? And is he one of those players that you don't just say, all right, we need four games out of him and we'll shut him down to save his red shirt? You see him being in a rotation often just simply because of this past weekend? Yeah, I think you'll have the chance. Again, he's got to you know, earn the right to be out there on the field. Tennessee is a little deep at that position. Um, when you think about Caleb Herring and Josh Josephs behind James Pierce, but He's someone that Tennessee knows they need to get on the field as a freshman. I think what it does is, is it buys Rodney Garner and, and Tim Banks a little bit of time because it's easy when you're when you're a you know well thought of freshman five star type player when you come in if you don't play as much as you would like early. But like when you have that kind of play, special teams, block punt, scoop and score, you score a touchdown in your first college game, 
it's just kind of like, okay, you know. I mean, you could also argue that it sets the expectations, but it's not like he had two or three sacks. This is a different type play. So it, I, I think, you know, it just allows them to continue to kind of bring him along. It keeps him satisfied. It's why I like Boo. I, you know, I think Boo makes a ton of sense, you know, on special teams because, like, if you are going to continue with Christian Harrison as your nickel or, or you know, at least splitting time with Boo, like, I think getting Boo more run on special teams kind of, you know, again, gives him a, you know, you dangle that carrot out there in front of him, you know, with, with the special team stuff. So I, I think Jordan Ross is one that will play. I think – how much that, that's dependent on how everybody plays in front of him and how he plays in his his limited reps because they will be limited reps. I mean, you're talking ten to twelve snaps a game. I, I don't see him playing more than that just because Tennessee is so deep in front of him with older guys that you know have a ton of talent. If you've spoken with Dante Thorne, man, what what does it feel like to have? I'm guess that pressure off of him in week one to actually show out, go and show what he was capable of. It was a pleasant surprise for me watching in the stadium, Austin. I must say that. He just carried himself with so much more confidence, and he really had that last year. If you really go back and you watch the film, go watch that Alabama game when he's playing in the slot and he is going across the middle. I, he he was just he was gun shy. He was leery of of you know you know getting lit up by a linebacker. That's just not what he's accustomed to. You put him out there on the outside, and and it's just a different feeling. And I think he has so much more confidence out on the outside than he ever did in the slot. And he really started to blossom. You go to the Kentucky game, which was after Alabama last year when they moved him. He had, you know, like 45 or 50 yard catch and run, get some confidence. The following week, Missouri, or two weeks after from Missouri, he makes that long catch. Tennessee's only touchdown of the day, and he gets hurt. And, you know, had to miss the rest of the year and, and spent many months rehabbing. I think just to pick back up where he left off and do it on the outside, I just think he's got a ton of confidence right now that, you know, he's kind of found his niche in this offense. And Josh Heupel and Kelsey, they love tall, long outside receivers. And he is that and then some. Austin Price joining us uh, this Tuesday morning here on RK Dub. So, Austin, when it comes to the run game, we clearly saw what Dylan Sampson did, uh, which was impressive. What else did you kind of get from what we saw from this run game and plenty of it on Saturday? Well, I I like the depth of the room. We all knew that, you know, it was the room that probably had the most question marks, Kayla, coming into the season because you had injuries, you had inexperience. And, and and all of that equals just unknown. And you know, to get you know Cam Seldon back for the first game, you know, and really before the first game because he was able to take you know you know a little bit of contact, not not real contact, but you know at least pads and that type of stuff in practice the last few weeks. Um, I, I thought that was big. Peyton Lewis has had a really strong fall camp, and Deshaun Bishop has again continued to impress and. They, you go from a room that still doesn't have a ton of experience, but they're not short on playmakers, and all those kids carry a, a, a little bit of confidence. Um, they're all tough-minded. They've all kind of, even the smaller ones like Samson and Bishop, have picked up on pass protection pretty well, something they probably weren't really very good at when they arrived. And I think it's a recipe for success for Darrell Sims in the room. So, when you, when you couple that together with an offensive line and a group of tight ends that block it up pretty well, um, Tennessee's got a really good chance to be just as effective as they were a year ago when Jalen Wright was, you know, averaging 10 yards a carry, basically. Austin, in terms of the secondary, I know Heupel, um, you know, not having Ricky Gibson play because of that hamstring. But in terms of Jermaud McCoy and what you saw out of him, what did you like and what maybe do, do, do you still need to see out of this secondary? Well, they weren't really tested. Um, I, I think that they're the one group that you still have some questions about on the defensive side of the ball. And I think more so in the, the back end, back end, back at safety. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tennessee, I just don't think could be super dynamic there. I don't think they're really that bad. I just don't think they're dynamic. And I think that that can be masked with the fact that I think McCoy can be very dynamic. And, you know, if Ricky Gibson can get that hamstring, 
healthy enough to play this week and you know play most of the year, then I think he can be super dynamic as well. So again, I don't think they're super deep in the secondary. I think parts of it have some real explosive dynamic traits to it. Other parts maybe not so much, but all that can be masked with you know good pass rush, good play at the linebacker level, and then I think good corner play, which is where I think Tennessee's best at in its secondary. Austin Price of Allquest with us. Austin, on the way out, as you look at this NC State team and the way they came out of the gates so poorly uh, last Thursday against Western Carolina, what is the key for Tennessee to get the win in this one? And is NC State as bad as uh, you, pretty much everybody thinks they really were uh, last Thursday? Well, they certainly weren't very good last week, but that's last week. Um, you know, you have nine days to prepare. You get a good you get a good plan. You execute your plan. Now, Tennessee's going to have to come to play well. They still have really quality playmakers. I'm interested to see how, you know, if Tennessee's able to get to Grayson McCall, how well he processes things. Because I think that's one of the, the keys in this game is how well does he see the field in warp speed? And, you know, if, if he doesn't see it very well and he's pressured into making bad decisions, what do those throws look like? But they absolutely have talent. They have really good playmakers. Noel Rogers was a five-star for a reason. They went to Ohio State originally before transferring back to his hometown team there in Raleigh. And then, you know, Concepcion is fantastic. And Tennessee's going to have to be very mindful. We heard that all day yesterday of where he's at. So, you know, for my liking, you know, Tennessee should win this game. But you have to get off to a quick start. And if Tennessee gets off to a quick start, then watch out. But, uh, you know, I think the start in this game is pivotal for, for Tennessee because, you're, to me, you're the better team. You need to go out and just, you know, impose your will. Volquest's Austin Price joins us Tuesdays here on Ramon, Kayla, and Will at Austin Priceless on Twitter, the authority on Tennessee Vols coverage. Uh, you need a Volquest subscription in your life, and their sale uh, continues at volquest.com uh, right now. Austin, great stuff as always, sir. Thank you. Appreciate you guys. Thank Thanks, you. Austin. Thanks, Austin. Yes, sir. There's Austin Price.